This Millennial Women Talk is sponsored by HBO Max. Hey MW, I'm Melissa. And I'm Stephanie Karakache. And we're two sisters and your hosts of Millennial Women Talk. In today's episode, we welcome the star and creator of the new HBO Max series, Vida Perfecta, Leticia Dolera. Set in Barcelona, Spain, Vida Perfecta follows the story of Maria, played by Leticia, as her story begins after getting dumped by her long-term boyfriend and pregnant by a one-night stand. Maria's meticulous life plan begins to slip through disarray, but her sister Esther and best friend Christina are determined to see her through. A refreshing look at life's messiest and most enlightening moments, Vida Perfecta dives into the intertwined stories of three women with very different ambitions, who nonetheless find themselves at a similar crossroads. Hilarious, heartfelt, and irreverent, the series follows Maria, Cristina, and Esther as they try their best to discover who they are and what they want. Please welcome the star and creator of Vida Perfecta, Leticia Dolera. Leticia, we are so excited to welcome you to Millennial Women Talk. But first of all, we have to like acknowledge that we are literally sitting in like the same living room across the world because you're in Barcelona, we're in Miami, yes. but we have the same chairs. This is so funny, right? Great. Yes. You have great taste in furniture, I'll tell you that. We are connected by the two. Yes. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay, so Leticia, we dove into Vida Perfecta this past weekend, and we were hooked. Like, honestly, after episode eight, we were like, that's it? We need to know what happens next? <laughs> I know. Uh, really? It was so, so good. So, oh, it was so, so good. Thank you. So what was the, the motivation behind creating Vida Perfecta? What was the motivation behind creating the series? Uh, well, it was, uh, for in, in one hand, the fact that I was having these conversations with my girlfriends uh, that were all around what it is uh, to, to have a couple, to be in a couple, what's a family supposed to be, what's, what's love supposed to be, what's success supposed to be, how, how do we cope with expectations uh, and real life, right? Because um, I think maybe it was because of the age, I, at the time of uh, start, I started writing it, I think I was 30, Three. So uh, these were the, the questions that my friends and I, you know, would talk and also about right. maternity, like, do you want to be a mother? You don't. What it is to be a mother, the friends that, that were mothers at that time, how they uh, cope with um, guilt and stress and work, you know, all those questions. And I think that um, it's like I use stories, in this case, this TV show to ask those questions to myself and to share those questions with the audience and say, hey, are you asking the same questions to yourself? We're not uh, alone in this, you know? I don't have the answers, but I'm gonna try to share all these things, these conflicts that I have inside. Wow. So maybe I don't feel uh, alone, you know what I mean? Right. And I definitely feel like you nailed that because these, were storylines that we definitely resonated with. So thank you so much for creating it. So we know that you star in it and you act in it, but we also hear that you produced and directed it. Did you do all of that as well? I I, I didn't produce it because I I don't like being okay. involved on in you know in in the numbers and the contracts and all that that kind of things. Mm -hmm. But at the end, since I get so, so involved, I suppose, yes, I kind of, I am in the production, but I will fall, I'm in the script writing and um, the direction and also I act in it, yes. That is awesome. I mean, I think that that's so beautiful and such a, a testament to women and how we're able to multitask. How was that for you, you know, when you're on set or creating this baby of yours and just kind of playing all those different roles and multitasking. How was that for you? Well, it's a very, it's hard. Like you have to work a lot, but it's also very, I don't know how to say this in English, gratificante. It's gratifying, gratifying. satisfying. Yeah. yeah, it's satisfying because 
at the end, it's like you're telling the story from the three pillars you tell stories from, from the script, from the direction, mm-hmm. and just saying those words uh, in, in front of the camera, right? So it's, yeah, it's hard work, but uh, I really like it and enjoy it. And it's such an opportunity being an actress to be able to give voice to something you wrote. Yes. Absolutely. And were you an actress first and then decided, hey, I should get into writing and developing like my own content? Or was your heart always set in, you know what, I have so much to say and there's so much to be said. I want to dive into creating and acting in my projects. Which came first? I think they both came at the same time. Like, um, like as an actress, I like to, to get involved with the process of creation, always respecting that it's the director and the scriptwriter point of view. But, you know, I take my job very passionate. And, um, mm-hmm. and also, yes, it's like, well, when, when, I, when I just acted, I always used to take uh, this small camera with me and I used to do this making of the movies of uh, I did right and then I edited in my home and so finally it's like that need of telling stories through images was increasing so mm. um there was a period of my career as an actress where I didn't get as ma- as many jobs mm. and so the need of communicating through stories didn't disappear so it's when I started writing uh, my first short film and once I directed mm. the short film, I discovered that I, I really, really enjoyed um, shooting and directing and being b- behind the camera, right? Because, yes, then you can, it's like, it's very exciting t- as an actress to be an, a tool so a director can tell uh, his point of view or her point of view about something. But it's also very exciting and you feel very vulnerable too when you are telling your own point of view so so it just came from a natural process i started directing short films and then i wanted more and more and more i love that that's so great and you know it's interesting because your show and as our watchers and listeners will will find out because i know they're going to tune into your show your show is all in spanish and with English subtitles, which honestly doesn't bother me at all. I watched it in both ways. I said, let me see how I can consume it. And I grabbed the storyline without a problem. It was really, really well done. You know, a lot of people would say, Leticia, if you want to make this show in, in America, let's just say, because it's on HBO Max, it has to be in English. How important was that for you to say, it's the value is in the Spanish, it has to be told in Spanish, and how did you stick to your guns when it came to that? Well, um... I also shot it in my hometown because I live in Madrid, okay. but I'm from Barcelona. So everything I've directed until now, I've shot it in Barcelona because I, I had that need like to, to be in the streets I, I grew in, right? So yes, I think, I mean, I, I would be happy to shoot in any language in, a, in any language that I understand, like English or French, for example. Right. But it's obvious to me that um, when you're talking and you're trying to do a very personal and from your guts story, it's better to, to tell it with your natural tongue or maternal tongue. How, how do you say that in tu lengua materna, we say in Spanish. Si. And, yeah. Um, yeah. and because, you know, all, the, all your memories and emotional memories are in that language so and i think also that stories are universal that's Mm -hmm. one of the greatest thing of the work we do right like uh i can be moved by a chinese german movie an american movie uh or a spanish movie because they talk about what it is to be human what it is to have these uh relationships Mm -hmm. with humans this is very universal and um I think even if you do it, do a story in a really small town, you you can connect with uh, an audience that is from yeah. whatever. Definitely, definitely. Absolutely. So you also mentioned that, you know, one of the inspirations, motivations you had for creating this show was just the conversations that you were having with your girlfriends in real life. 
Were the, any of the characters based off of some of your real life friends? Um, I think I'm myself, I am in each one of the characters. Like, um, okay. for example, Maria, she's uh, the one I play. She, her personality is based on my actual personality. Like she, uh, she's a control freak <laughs> and she likes to have a plan. And yeah. <laughs> so that's something I work with. You know, I struggle with that and I'm much better now because I've been doing therapy and, you know, I'm learning uh, how to get loose, you know, a dejarme llevar. And yes. I'm, I'm learning that it's better because it's impossible to try to have everything under, mm -hmm. under control because life itself, sometimes, you know, it's free and yeah. it, it doesn't fit with your mental idea always. So uh, in that hand, yes, I connect a lot with Maria and also um, with Esther, you know, that moment of my career as an actress where I told you that I didn't get as many jobs. Um, right. Esther talks about that, no? the, her character, what it is to be successful, yeah. uh, what it is to be an artist. Yeah. Like she's a painter. So um, is, is she less of a painter because she doesn't sell her paintings? She's happy when she paints. Right, so right. she has to stop painting because she doesn't sell her paintings or she should just accept that maybe what she does doesn't fit in the market and she can just right. keep doing it by herself and for herself and maybe try to do something else to get money from, right? Because right, right. I don't know if that happens to you, uh, but you know, when, when, when we are kids in the school, everybody ask to you, um, what do you want to be when you're older or when, when you're uh, mm -hmm. grande, mayor? And it's like, right. we get this idea that we are what our job is. Like we are our jobs and, and we're not our jobs. We're so many much more things. And also we have this sentence that uh, I don't like it, uh, that says, querer es poder. Mm -hmm. Like if you want something, and you fight for it, you get it. Okay, maybe you don't. Maybe you don't get it. And you don't have to feel frustrated your whole life because you didn't achieve that dream that you had, right? It's like, um, right. it's very beautiful to have the, the American dream, but what if you don't get it? If you don't uh, achieve that thing, if you get so obsessed by that, maybe, your life sucks <laughs> because you're just obsessed by yeah. that. And maybe if you get more flexible, right. you can find that life has other paths or other options right. to you, right? So all those questions were yeah. the questions I wanted to explore with Esther. And maybe Cristina, mm. uh, in one hand, yes, I connect with Cristina a lot. Uh, I will fall with this, um, fact that um, she has this perfect life and she discovers she's not happy in that perfect life and a crack opens in that and through that crack desire enters and desire enters as mm. sexuality sexual desire but I think sexuality is a way to connect with her desire in life not just uh, in sex um, and so right. I feel very connected with that too, since uh, I went to this Catholic school when I was little. And so I had this, all these um, concepts and images around uh, women desire and, and sexuality, um, right. female sexuality above all, uh, they, 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 they all went around guilt, right? And um, right. Yeah, right. when I turned, uh, 30 and I started writing about feminism, I started uh, getting released uh, about that idea. And, and I started like mm. to leave my own sexuality with, without that guilt, you know? And so in that mm. sense, right. I connect with that uh, part of Christina. Yeah, which we were talking about and specifically about Christina, how we always saw that sexual desire play out more in male characters. 
and how interesting it was that you took on that through a female's perspective and it just made it all that much more relatable you know um so that was that was really really great i really liked how you did that thank you a lot of our listeners and millennial women in general right we tend to fall in love with the illusion of whatever life is right whatever that career is whatever that marriage is whatever that life looks like and that's why i think it's so powerful that you played it in three different perspectives right the one that has it all together that controls it and then you know kind of falls apart the other one that has it and now doesn't want it and the one that has this illusion that still hasn't like attained it yet you know i we, it's funny we do really all relate to all three because at one point or another we do live out that storyline in some way shape or form right. throughout our yeah. lifetime and i think it's important to not showcase the illusion of, of life, but to showcase the whole development of the journey, which is what you do so beautifully in the series. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. I think we all struggle. I love that. We all struggle with life expectations. Like we grow up yes. with these intellectual concepts of what a perfect life is. Right. right? And uh, what a family right. is, what a couple is, what love is, what success is. And once you go through all those concepts and you put take them down to earth uh yeah sometimes they don't fit with that idea that you had right. or in the case of Christina they fit but they, they don't make you happy so maybe you you need something else right. maybe that perfect life uh doesn't make yes. you happy and also I wanted to talk about maternity yeah uh, I'm not uh I don't have kids but yes. I have so many girlfriends that do and and it's amazing how, how their life changes of course in so many ways in a good way and they have like these great experiences and this uh, love and blah blah but also they since they are workers because you know uh, also the system told us that yes you have to be a great mother and uh, uh, in, ca in the case of Christina a great lawyer mm -hmm. and a great uh, a wife and a great friend and also you have to dress great and be great and it's a lot of pressure that women yeah. and yeah. All, above all above. women who are mothers uh they have it you know on their back and 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 what surprised me talking to all these uh mothers was that they all felt guilty they yeah. all felt they weren't good enough right and uh, i was like why do you feel this way right mm -hmm you shouldn't because your husband doesn't feel that way <laughs> right right so um all those questions and all those conflicts i mean i don't have an answer uh, i think the show doesn't give you answers but with the show i wanted to share all those answers all those questions sorry and you're right it doesn't give you the answers i think that the goal and correct me if i'm wrong your intention is to make them feel less alone in their journey that what these characters are going through and it's okay you see yourself in them like there is a scene in particular and i hope i'm not giving too much away so that's why people have to go and watch the show when christina talks to paulo in the in the reunion and she you know he talks about the girls and he says that she couldn't stand them and that took me aback i judged her for a minute i'm not gonna lie i said how could you say you're not right. gonna stand your daughters but in a lot of ways when you look at the pressures of her right. the pressure she puts on herself I mean, it does get to a point where you're just like, you, como like, tenía que desahogarse, claro, and claro. Right, and just like let let it all out. Yeah. Yes, know? and it's it's, it's, uh, it's human. In a lot of ways, it was actually, and it's human. You know, yeah, it's sometimes human. you can be so in love with your partner, and sometimes you can just ah, mm -hmm. get out of the way. I, I can't stand you. I love you, but I, uh, right. leave me alone. Yeah. Why we don't tolerate that with children, with sons and right. daughters? I mean. Right. Yes, it's okay. You can have the, those feelings. The thing is that you are an adult and you are a father mm -hmm. or a mother in this case, and you don't um, pass these feelings to your sons or daughters, obviously. But it's okay yeah. to feel that thing. We, we cannot control our feelings. And actually, our feelings are always uh, going through light and dark. And yep, if right. you yes. don't tolerate dark, that light is going to be like kind of fake, you know? Exactly. A hundred percent. You know, you said that so well. And I love that you said it's human, you know, and to really portray humanity through these characters and through art is what makes art art. And we always talk about that. It's like if 
you know, if you just create kind of the cookie cutter characters, how does it really reach that person? And I know what you mean by you don't have any of the answers in the show, but the thing is that art creates the answers within the viewer and it's different for everyone else. And I really think that you hit that with this show. I want to ask you, looking back on the whole process of creating it, writing it, shooting it, is there anything that was very challenging for you? What was like the hardest part of this whole season in your life in creating Vida Perfecta? I think that the script process, because uh, I think um, the script is the El Cimiento. I don't know. How, I don't right. know how to say this in English, you know, but it's the base of everything the base. and the base of the story. And uh, right. it's, uh, I think it's the hardest part, writing mm. and, and seeing that maybe you took a, um, a way that it's not working and you have to erase all that work and start again. And, mm. and at the same time, it's very exciting, but it's hard. Sometimes yeah. you just, um, you're like, ah, <laughs> like, ¿Por qué? Socorro, quiero irme de aquí, basta. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but at the same it. time you yeah. cannot stop because because it's right. like um I'm, I'm gonna sound very like maybe romantic with this but when i'm writing and also when i'm directing but above all when i'm writing i feel like if i had this big stone and i'm start i start a picar how do you right. say yeah like chipping away at it right chipping away yes and i'm like I'm going to find out what's inside this rock. And I, I know this, it's something beautiful. I want to find, I want to, you know, I want to, I want to get it. And I have to yeah. do it more and more. And um, at the end, you, you, you find your own shape of the sculpture, let's say. Right. Um, and yes, sometimes it, it will be perfect or less perfect. But I mean, it will be better or, or worse. But um, for me, what, what's important when I'm writing is that, uh, I feel comfortable because um, yeah. what I've, I mean, I'm not going to say anything new, but if there's a part of the story that it doesn't work in the script, it will never work in the story. Like right. by magic, it won't get fixed when, I mean, right. actors won't, won't fix uh, something that wasn't good in the script, right? So right. yes, the, 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 the biggest challenge is, is the script always. Yeah, I love that you said that. And I would love to know, what does having a vida perfecta mean to you? <laughs> Something that is impossible. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. Yes. It I is. mean, it's an utopia. What I would say, it's a fantasy. It's a fantasy. Yeah. Right? Yes. <laughs> there is no perfection. And also, like, perfection is so subjective because what's perfect to you can be, like, I don't see that as perfection. Like, we all have different theories and ideas so to have a universal life of perfection like you know in this case when we see like yes. success as a woman is finding you know a mar having a marriage having kids the career all that it's to some people that's not perfect you know and I just think that it's all so subjective and I that's what I got out of the show you know it's like vida perfecta like we you could have a perfect life for you if you are able to find whatever makes you enlightened in life, whatever that is, that yes. could be your perfect life. And it's different from and, people and, to people. And I, I think that it can change. I mean, right. you go yes. through your life and your emotional needs can change. What makes you yeah. happy can change. And it's okay. It's just, yeah. we're like in this process of constant growing, right? Yes, right. 100%. 100%. Which sometimes, sometimes it's exhausting. Sometimes it's exhausting. Sometimes all the time. It's a part of it. It's what it is. Yes. Yeah. It's always exhausting, Leticia. Okay. This journey of life is not yeah. easy. <laughs> it's not easy, but, but you do have those moments. And it goes back to what you were saying, that without the dark, you can't have the light. You know, like it's, it's, it's all a part yes. of it. It's when we look at art, when we look at masterpiece, everything it's, has its shades. There's dark to then highlight. I mean, that is what life is and we have to embrace it, right? Totally. And I love that. What would be the message that you want to relate to women with this series? What's your intention? How do you want us to receive this series? Uh, I, I would 
um, for sure, I would say, um, I would feel like, I would like them to feel like I'm, ¿cómo se dice tender la mano? Like, I'm giving Like extend you, your hand, yeah. I'm extending my hand saying, hey sister, are you worried about this too? Are you, do you feel lonely in this conflict? Do you feel pressure? Do you feel frustrated? Yeah. Uh, are you scared sometimes? You're not alone. Right. We are not alone. You know, like, yes, we, you're not crazy. <laughs> and, um, and yes. <laughs> and also like, um, it's like you, you explain it very well. The, the both of you, like, um, life it's it's what it is and it's it changes all the time and it doesn't exist a perfect life and that's why we put the poster like this yeah, upside yeah. down and the title you know like this because vida perfecta mm -hmm, right you know like life it's it's um te da la vuelta a la vida right. no sí. yes so many times in your life you're gonna get twisted by it and And sometimes you're gonna piss, you're gonna get pissed, and you're gonna say, "I don't need to learn anything else. <laughs> Please stop." But but after all those twists that life gives you, I mean, you can always get something new and discover some parts of yourself or of your friends, and this is what life is about. I oh, love beautifully that. said. That was so wonderful, Leticia. We are so grateful that you took the time to speak to us and be on our show today. Thank you. We are excited for everybody to see your series. And I heard that you do have a season two, right? Yes. Yes. Woo! We are in the, in the oh, process yes, of editing. We're almost finishing the editing. And I'm very excited. Amazing. And um, and I think the second season, uh, it's going to be kind of more... Um, mature like uh it, it gets to more deep deeper oh i love that Amazing. and i actually it's it's i'm so excited about that because that's what i was craving when it ended i go oh i need to know now yes like the root of this right because there's so many unanswered right. questions yeah. so hopefully we get them answered <laughs> in season two so it's very exciting. i'm looking forward to going deeper in season yes. two leticia thank you so much for your time it really was awesome thank you so much Thank you for tuning in to today's episode. You can now binge watch the entire season of Vida Perfecta on HBO Max. And also follow Leticia on Instagram at Leticia Dolera Official. We encourage you to continue on with the conversation. Keep being the strong, amazing woman that you are and never forget to live inspired. Until next time, MW. Always love Melissa and Stephanie Karkachis.